cordial greeting to all. We feel happy, excited to be able to share with you this moment. For we all have come with great joy. Glory to God. We all are here because we love the Lord, because our hearts, we have a desire to please Him and to dedicate to Him these few moments with so much joy, with so much gladness. Many of you with your families, many of you in your households or wherever you may be, you are doing everything Everything is possible to be here with us, and the Lord is looking at this. May God bless you for this, for this feeling, for that purpose. May God manifest himself very much in your hearts. May the God of glory give you his presence, spiritual and wonderful presence. Praises to the Creator. Our God is great, our Lord is good. Welcome also all listeners and newcomers in to these broadcasts it is a source of joy to be able to spend this time with you all let us dedicate to the most high this service with all the strength of our being with all our happiness with all our joy and with all our gratitude for our lord blessed god we want to thank you for the these moments that you are granting us Thank you, Lord, for our lives. Thank you, because you have allowed us to be with us, and you have given us life. And you have allowed us to come to enjoy your manifestation, your glory, your power, your greatness, your endless love, your presence in our midst. Lord, we feel astonished of your glory. We are astonished of your miracles, at all your wonders, your presence in our midst. We love you, Lord. We bless you. We glorify you. We are here, Lord, to love you, to honor you, to bless you, to give you honor, to give you exaltation, and to sing to, to your holy name, to praise before you, to honor you, also to read the Bible and to exalt you. We long, O oh Lord, that you are pleased and your Holy Spirit may descend and that you may manifest yourself to our hearts, that you give us great liberty, spiritual liberty, joy, fervor. May the Holy Spirit move in each heart. May our God be with us. Thank you for your church uh, among the nations. Thank you, Lord, for your manifestation, for everything you have taught us through our sister Maria Luisa, and that you are teaching us every day, which we value and we rejoice in it. We feel happy and full in you. Blessed is your name in the, na in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In that name, the glorious name, in that only name, we honor you and we Dedicate the service to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Let us read in our Bibles. Let us read in the book of Proverbs. Let us read book of Proverbs chapter number two. We are going to read Proverbs chapter two. And we're very happy with the Lord. Glory to God. We're so excited to read the Bible, for instance reading what the Bible teaches us here in Proverbs chapter number 2. We read, starting in verse number 1, for the, for the honor and the glory, for the exaltation of the name of the Lord. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, you may read, we will read all of us at the same time. Verse number three, 2. So that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures. 
then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. This is what we all want. Isn't this right? For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the paths of justice and preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity, and every good path. Amen. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Glory to our God. Great is the Most High. You may take your sheets. We are going to sing before our Maker, before our Creator, before the blessed God, the God of glory, the everlasting Father. Let us sing starting with hymn number 16. Have you heard the good news? Number 16. Thank you, Lord. We give you honor. We bless you. We honor you. And we bless you. We exalt you. Honor and glory to our Lord. Blessed is forever. Let us also sing hymn number 129. Your blessed word. We are talking about the value of what the Lord has given us so that we may enjoy it. Because how great is this blessing God has given us with the Bible. Just as our worldwide spiritual leader, our sister Mary Luisa said, eternal life is in the Bible, glory to the Lord. And for that reason, this hymn is so beautiful, so wonderful. Why is it so precious? Because it exalts the Holy Scripture. Let us sing this with our soul, number 129.
Praises to the Lord. Blessed is our God. Let us rise and let us thank the Most High for all the blessings we've received. I am certain that you have been greatly blessed by the Lord. Who among you feels blessed by the Most High? Glory to God. We are all raising our hands because the Lord has blessed us exceedingly. He has been very generous to each of us. We have no way to pay him. The only thing we can say to him at this time is to give him thanks and say, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for being so good to us. And of course, with our good testimony, the way the good, our good life we can leave, lead, that's how we show our gratitude to the Most High. Let us pray. We're not going to ask anything for, to, uh, to the Lord. We're going to thank, thank Him. All right? Let us do so. Blessed Lord, we thank you endlessly for all your favors, Lord, all your benefits. As we were saying earlier, the life you give us, your protection, your help, your transformation, which you've given our lives, our happiness, our joy, our peace, knowing your path, enjoying the manifestation of your perfect gospel, of your complete gospel, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, the spiritual gifts, the gifts of prophecies, the visions, the dreams, so many manifestations, Lord, being led by the Holy Spirit. Enjoy these privileges which is your protection, your promises you have made to us. Lord, recently so many beautiful and wonderful promises, the general prophecies we get, everything you have said to us, Lord, the way in which you have been by our side, looking at us, providing for us, guiding us, teaching us your path, giving us so much happiness, comfort, joy, and your support at the time you we most needed your presence your manifestation your glory your endless love thank you lord thank you for the church thank you for your power thank you for your manifestation in the name of our lord jesus christ amen blessed is the name of the lord let us sing choruses to exalt the most high and it, first we will begin with chorus number 98 my house is founded upon the rock. Glory to God. We are steadfast with the Lord. Blessed is his name. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. We love you. We honor you. We bless you. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your holy name. Blessed is our Maker. And it is important to bear in mind that we are Christians. Whenever they ask you, well, talk to me about the church, you can say to whoever asks you, we are Christians in the church who, who put the Bible into practice. We value the Bible so much because eternal life is in the Bible. Glory to the Lord. And we live the Bible, which is the most beautiful thing. You live, you read about it in the Bible that there's a gift of prophecy, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. That's a reality in our midst. And thus, for example, everything that we read, you compare it with your life and you say, I am living the Bible. We learn the Bible by living it. And then whenever we read, we say, 
I heard this. I lived this. It is something wonderful. Christians who put the Bible in the practice, led by the Holy Spirit. Glory to the name of the Lord. And also, I would like to invite you all to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are going to have a tutorial where you are going to see that you first click the thumbs up to give to click like, then you subscribe, and afterward you enable all notifications. And that way we can also evangelize by being by subscribing to the YouTube channel, going into the website of the church. Then we can send that material to our friends, to our family members, and the Lord will be happy with you. If you do that, you will make the Lord very happy. You share to people because many people need God. And this is an a great opportunity. Everything we are living now for people to turn their hearts to God. Glory to God. Very well. Let us sing another chorus. Chorus number 135. Do your utmost. Be eager to do your utmost. To go as an approved worker before God is what is this beautiful chorus says. Number 135. Praises to the Lord. Great is our God. Blessed is the name of our ha Savior. Glory to the Most High. And let us read in our Bibles. We are going to read in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 28. We are going to read verse number 1. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse number one we are going to read for the glory and the honor of the lord the bible states as follows now it shall come to pass that if if you diligently obey the voice of the lord your god to serve carefully all his commandments which i command you Today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. Amen. Glory to the Lord. You may take your seats. You may have a seat, brothers and sisters. And this sermon, or with this sermon, we want to go, trail back to a beautiful general prophecy that our sister Maria Luisa gave us this past Sunday. 
I believe you remember it because we have been paying close attention to those beautiful messages which our sister Maria Luisa has preached to us but also at the end of each service through general prophecy we have all received as an ultimate blessing as the ultimate blessing on behalf of our God to see the Holy Spirit guiding us and uh, this past Sunday during the sermon that was concerning the Lord Jesus Christ being the bread of life at the end the Holy Spirit said words that were very beautiful those who put their heart it said those who have put their heart and their attention I will bless them and there were many messages in that prophecy beautiful words but that area that that aspect the Holy Spirit spoke and said those who put their heart those who put their heart and also they put they pay attention I will bless them it caught my attention when he said pay attention those were the words by the Holy Spirit so what happened it caused it, it led me to look into the Bible and see passages in the Bible that talked about paying attention to God or heeding God and also how could we relate that correlated to our heart to our Lord to God's blessing and here in Deuteronomy 28 we find a passage and also that's where the Bible, the, the sermon title of the sermon was because the title of the sermon is God blesses those who put their heart and attention to his word those who put their heart as the Holy Spirit said God blesses those who put their heart and attention to his word we then start to look at this in Deuteronomy 28 where since that time the Lord was already saying to his people that they were to pay attention diligently obey to observe to obey all the commandments that they had to pay attention to the commandments and that they had to observe them meaning put them into practice that is what the Lord taught in antiquity note the way it says it it, it is there now it shall have come to pass if you diligently obey meaning they should hear but it was diligently obey the voice of the Lord because God was speaking to them just as the Lord speaks to us today as well that if they note it says if they when God spoke to them they diligently obeyed they had to obey and that means to heed with that we then began to understand what the Holy Spirit was saying in that beautiful prophecy that those who heard and those who opened their hearts and paid attention to his word God is going to bless them yes today when we for instance listen to prophecy or when we are listening to our sister Mary Louisa during a sermon one of her messages and we heed we he we hear with our heart we hear we we pay attention we heed we are focusing and we hear with our heart then God will bless us and that's what he asked from them in antiquity why so that it then states to observe carefully all his commandments and what was going to happen that's the aspect those who put their heart and pay attention I will bless them because it says God will bless them and when it says that God will bless them 
in this verse, it, me, it meant in the end, at the end it said, I, your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. He said, I will set you high. He was going to bless them. And so it is very motivating, very beautiful to see that since antiquity, the Lord was already inviting his people to pay attention. And when that prophecy, that general prophecy took place, God is teaching us that we have to pay attention and we have to put our hearts into the Lord's commandments, into the doctrine, into everything that we are learning every day. Likewise, in the book of Isaiah, let us read Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55, verse number. Two. Isaiah 55. Verse number two. The Bible states regarding this topic. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what is not satisfy? He asked the question. And then let us look at this, brother, what it says. Listen, listen, but how? It says, carefully, meaning the Lord is pleased with us paying attention to all his things and that we hear and that we heed his prophecies, the sermons that That is to pay attention to the Lord. Look at how beautiful. For the Lord, this is very important. The Lord likes you to pay attention to everything that has to do with Him. The fact that you, for example, on Sunday, that you wake up, you're excited and you say, I am going to turn on the live stream today. We have a sermon. This is so exciting. That excitement from the moment you wake up you thank the Lord for your life, for his favors, for his benefits. And then that desire of yours to sit down, and watch a live stream, to learn, to focus on what you are learning, to value it, not become distracted. For God, this is something very great. And the Lord 
this makes the Lord very happy. And that's what the Holy Spirit said, that because there are so many people who are starting to come to our live streams also, then the Lord was also teaching us. People who are opening their hearts, people who are analyzing, who are, the, their hearts are open for God. And then those people are, God will bless them. That everyone who does this, God will bless them. Glory to the Lord. And here in antiquity, he told them, in verse number two, he said this to them. Listen carefully to me and eat what is good, because they were not putting this into practice. And they were not listening carefully to the Lord. What is the opposite to, to listening carefully? The opposite is to get distracted. To get distracted means that you the person's there during a live stream or whenever we congregate and then the person's mind is far away. Thinking about other things. Thinking about problems. Thinking about what happened today. Thinking about so many situations the person is distracted. That's a way to look at it. Another way to look at this, a person who's distracted, is when the person does not want to value what the person hears. The person doesn't put their heart. The person hears it, but doesn't pay, doesn't give any importance to it. And questions it, doubts about it, doubts it. And does it keep it in, the per in his heart? M much less will the person understand it because he doesn't believe the person believes something else or thinks differently and uh, the person is simply not re willing to investigate to look into the bible to say because all the sermons for example that our sister Maria Luisa has given us there are so many teachings that are so beautiful that bring us profound doctrine the foundations the heaven the gospel and everything that God gave us all that depth the jobs of the the, the the roles of the Lord Jesus the as the bread of life, as the water of life, meditate on all of that, everything that is taught to us. This is so that we can start to read it in the Bible and say, yes, I, I care about this. It is written here in the Bible since antiquity. I see it in this verse and this and another. I see it in the in the in the Old Testament. Put your heart into it. But that's what the Holy Spirit wants. That's what he is saying. He who does this, whoever pays attention, reflects on it, meditates on it, receives it, starts to look at it, and starts to read it, starts to think about this, then starts to analyze it, put it into practice. What we were saying, for instance, how to pray, how to ask the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. All these sermons that are practical, praising God, so many teachings. All these teachings, if people value them and pay attention and they put their hearts into it, because for you to pay attention, you have to put your heart into it because you do everything with your heart. If you are willing, if you want to, if you desire it, if you are seeking God, the Lord will bless you. Glory to God. You will receive many blessings. Praises to the Lord. And it is so simple. It is that it, it takes you wanting. It takes you opening your heart and desiring it. It takes you being willing to analyze this. It takes you being in that quest for God with so much sincerity that you are open to read the Bible, to search it, to read. God will reward you for that very much. There's a person who suffered uh, thrombosis or stroke. You know, when it, when it comes to a stroke, there's a problem. And the way the brain works, many times people lose the ability to move their bodies. And so this person lost his, his, the ability to move his foot. And his foot was ab uh, completely crooked. And this person couldn't walk well. He suffered very much. A family of member of this person invited him to watch the live stream and said, come, join me. 
Let's just spend these time, these few moments together. Let us seek God. And he sat down with her to watch the live stream with an open heart, with uh, by valuing God, and he paid attention to the things of God with his heart. He started to listen. He started to analyze it. He started to analyze everything, and he continued joining her. And one day, when... The time of the prayer came from our sister Maria Luisa. He called unto God and he said, I'm going to put the teaching in the practice. I'm going to pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to the everlasting Father. He did so with so much sincerity. God saw that he genuinely was putting his heart into it and he was paying attention as well. And what happened? That... The prayer happened, and four days later, his foot was completely healed. And he was marveled, astonished to see the miracle God had performed in his life because it was impossible. But that's it. That's God's answer. And that's where the prophecy comes in. I am going to bless you. The Lord is offering blessings, but we are not going to do it out of a material interest. We are going to do it because... We love him because we are great. We feel grateful because of the opportunity he has given us, because we want to learn, because we want to put this, this word into practice. And we know how it is. God blesses those who put their heart and attention to his word. And so we're going to do that. All right. Of course we are. I am convinced we are all going to do this. Blessed is the name of the Lord and our God. What will happen? Our God will be very, we will make our God happy. Praise us to the King of glory. Wonderful is to think that God is happy with us, that we do something that he, that pleases him and he is pleased with this, that we pay attention to his things, that we value his things, that we do so with our hearts. Let us also read in Nehemiah chapter number 8. Let us read the teaching in Nehemiah regarding paying attention and the way our God blesses people when people do it this way. In Nehemiah chapter 8, we're going to read verse number Five. It is a very, it was a very beautiful moment wherein Ezra was with Nehemiah was with the people, and everyone was paying attention. Were paying attention to Ezra, to what he was teaching. And verse number five states, and Ezra, in this case, it was Ezra speaking, teaching. He was the priest. It is in the book of Nehemiah. And Ezra opened the book. At that point, they had the law of Moses. Today, we have the Bible. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. What is that a signal? That they paid attention all, everyone stood up. It catches my attention because it says all the people, meaning everyone. God had taught them that they had p to pay attention. And we also have learned, and God is teaching us, and, the, and hence the prophecy. God wants us all to, te to learn, to be focused, to pay, to put our five senses, not to think about anything else, to hear with our heart and to do so to heed to listen to receive that those teachings and trust in it and afterward analyze it embrace it so that we can then put it into practice glory to god that's what god wants for us to pay attention and thus god will bless us very much let us pay attention to everything that is done, everything that has to do with the Lord. And, all, and then the Bible repeats it, that the Levites, in verse number 
Well, there was a great praise because in verse number six, it says, And Ezra blessed the Lord. Look at that, how it says, Bless the great God. And then all the people answered, Amen, Amen. Lifting up their hands. They were so happy. It was praising because they all were very focused. They all were paying attention. And God was rewarding their reverence, their heart, which they poured into the things of the Lord. The Levites also taught the word of the Lord, the law of Moses, as verse 7 states, that you had all the Levites. And then at the tail end it says, and and they, the Levites helped the people to understand the law, and the people stood in their place, meaning they were very attentive. I imagine that right now there's none of you who are distracted. Glory to God. I am sure that right now there's none of you who's distracted. And we are going to do this very conscientious. We must always know that we must, especially with the Bible studies, the sermons from our sister Mary Louisa, everything that has to do with the Lord, as well as the songs, whenever we're singing our hymns, choruses, whenever we pray, worship the Lord, we must put our five senses into it, give the best to God. We, we should not think about our problems. So many problems are solved in life by not thinking about them so much. Instead, you just pray. And those problems are solved that way. You read the Bible, that's how you solve them. So many brothers and sisters in the church have seen the way God has blessed them and has solved their problems because they do this. Because they pay attention, glory to God, because they focus, because they are free, because when a person is filled with problem thinking about his debt, thinking about his material problem, thinking about a problem, marriage pro marital problem, instead of enjoying the moment, reading the Bible, focusing instead of uh, being nourished, person is just thinking about his problem and this person does not receive any blessings. However, those who focus and pay attention, they only think about this and they are only here putting their heart into it with all their five senses because look at what verse 8 states. So they read distinctly from the book and the law of God. They gave the sense, meaning they were paying attention. They were focused with their five senses. They only had eyes to see the things of God. They only had thoughts to think about God. They only had a heart to think about the things of God. They were loving that those teachings that came from the Bible. That is exactly none other what the Lord wants you and I, all of us, to put into practice. Glory to the Lord. And we are going to do it. God is going to help us. And if you pay attention, God is going to help you. And you are going to start to feel that when you are in the things of God, you are then going to experience something great. You are going to experience, you, are, you will have the spiritual experiences. You will feel warmth in your body. You will feel excited. You will feel peace. You will feel the way God, everything that you do in those moments during, the, during our gatherings, it causes a huge effect in your being. A, a great transformation as well, because as you are focused and you listen with so much love and so much cheerfulness, God transforms you. Glory to God. God takes away your vices. He takes away your mistakes. God per makes uh, perfects you. God helps us. Thank you, Lord. You are great. Thank God, because we, he tells us how to do it. That's why we say that we are Christians who put the Bible into practice, because it is in the Bible. You can, you can see it, but led by the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit was, was the one who told us, pay attention. Pay, put your heart into it. That's the key. We already know. If God is teaching us how to do things, then what are we lacking in life? Nothing. We are the most privileged people upon the face of the earth, as well as the most blessed on this earth. Hallelujah. Great is the Lord, who among you blesses and exalts the Most High. All of us, because we love Him. Glory to God. And let us read also in Acts of the Apostles, the way this same principle was kept and preserved. Because as the Bible says, Jesus Christ is the same one yesterday, today, and forever. Therefore, nothing changes. And if 
In Deuteronomy, he told them that they had to hear, carefully, diligently obey then. In Acts of the Apostles, he was teaching the same thing, that whenever there was a sermon or teachings, then, just as in the time of Ezra, they were to pay attention, then the same thing was happening in the the apostolic church. And we read this in Acts 8, Verse number 6, Acts 8, verse 6, which teaches us about Philip, that Philip was preaching to them, and this was a source of joy for the people. But when they were preaching to them at the city of Samaria, When he was preaching the gospel, just as in the time of Ezra, everyone was paying attention. In this case, it says that it doesn't say all, but it says with one accord. They all have the same feeling. And that's what God wants for us to be with one accord, heeding, paying attention. This is something great for the Lord. The Lord would not want, not even one, to be distracted. To say, no, I don't believe that, I don't I don't think that's right, uh, it's just the way I think. But rather, to listen and allowing God, giving that chance to God through reading the Bible. Because everything we teach is based on the Bible and how to analyze it and reflect on it. And to reach a conclusion. And in Philip was preaching to them, verse number 6. And the multitude in Acts 8, and the multitude with one accord, what? Heeded. There it is. Heeded. That's the way it is. And we find it in the Bible. It's beautiful because that's the prophecy. Pay attention. Those who put their heart and those who pay attention, I will bless them. And that covers so many people who are newcomers also who are starting to come to our church. This is a message for everyone, for those who are long-standing members as well as newcomers. And back then they were they heeded the things that Philip said. They were saying, "I'm doing this. I'm not doing this. I'm putting this into practice. I'm not putting up this. I am. This is interesting. I didn't know this. I didn't know the Bible said this. That, uh, this is great. I'm going to start to go through it. I'm going to study this topic. I'm going to put this teaching in the practice. I think this is important. I'm going to pay attention. I'm going to put my heart into everything. I'm doing everything that has to do with the Lord. I am going to open and uh, prepare my heart for God. I'm not going to have my heart hard as a rock, but I'm going to have a, heart, a tender heart. I'm going to let him teach me. And I'm going to be humble. And you... Join all these teachings together. And then it says, He did the things spoke by him, and seeing the miracles which he did, because they also heard the testimonies and saw the miracles, just as today we have also seen and we have also heard beautiful miracles from the Lord. For example, our God worked a miracle, a beautiful miracle a few days ago with a child in Paraguay. This child, imagine brothers and sisters, he swallowed a coin, a big coin. In Paraguay, they call it the Guaranese, one of the biggest coins they had, and he swallowed it. And so they showed me the x-ray, I was looking at the x-ray, and the x-ray shows the coin, a a big coin, because they took the child to the doctor, they, they, they took x-rays, and the doctor said to the parents, we're going to wait five, four days. If the child does not pass it, pass the coin, then we have to intervene. This is a complex surgery, major surgery, because then we would have to uh, go into his stomach, his intestine, and look for it, look for the coin, and then remove it. And it, it, it's, it, there are risks involved. And it's a very beautiful work of the Lord because his parents, they were in the midst of the problem, but they sat down to watch the sermon that Sunday from our sister Mary Luisa with so much love, 
with all their heart to the point that they only had eyes and a heart to hear and to learn and to think about the Lord and nothing else. And they didn't think about the, the problem of the child. Only at the, ta- at the very end when our sister Maria Luisa said, we're going to pray for petitions. These are the signs that happened during the lifetime of Philip, which we live today as well, glory to God, that the mother and the father prayed, called unto God at that moment. They forgot about all the problems. They forgot about such difficulty they were experiencing, and they only paid attention to the teaching. And they prayed to the Lord, and what happened? That a few days after that, whenever they went to the surgery, they did. A, they took an x-ray on the child, and the coin was nowhere to be found. The entire time, mom was paying attention to see if the child would pass the coin, meaning, in a testimony, she said that the child never passed the coin, and the coin di- just disappeared, completely disappeared. That's a miracle got performed. Blessed is our God. This is something... That's incredible, extraordinary. But why did that happen? That happened because these parents paid, put their hearts into it to such extent, paid so much attention to everything that was being done that the Lord was very pleased with the way in which they gave themselves at that moment. And the Lord t- took action by performing an extraordinary miracle. Blessed is the name of the Lord. God lives. God is power. Glory to the Lord. The Bible also teaches us in Acts 16. Let us read. Acts 16. Let us read about the experience that a woman lived whose name was Lydia with the Apostle Paul. Because this woman worshipped God. This woman already had a belief. Just as today, many people who are joining us as listeners who haven't gotten to congregate with us in our gathering locations, but they are gathering at the end of the day with us because we are joining us in these gatherings And it is likely that you also have your own beliefs, but you are opening your hearts to read the Bible with love, to hear with your heart, to heed. And as Lydia, you are receiving the Lord's help to believe more, to trust more, to be greatly transformed so that you feel the presence of the Most High even more because it is a gift, a favor, a blessing of the Lord. That is exactly what happened with Lydia, that God wanted to bless her just as God wants to bless you all. And that is why you are also feeling something and you want, you want in your heart, you or if you feel that desire to hear, the desire to read, a desire to search in depth, to examine, to draw conclusions, that is God given because God wants to bless you. And note that this happened with Lydia because this was the plan of God that she was to pay attention, that she was to heed so that she would be blessed. Verse 14 states now a certain woman named Lydia heard us. She was a seller of purple, meaning some fabric, from the city of Thyatira, who worshipped God. What I just said. She was listening. She was, but we may hear, but we are distracted. And so that's why the Lord says, heed. He doesn't just say hear, but he said heed. That's what we ought to do. We ought to heed. And she was heeding. And the Lord opened her heart heart to heed. That's it. The Lord himself 
soften our heart. That's a blessing of God because that's what the Holy Spirit said. Put your heart and pay attention. But what's great here is that God helps us so that we put our heart and so that we heed. Why? It said, he opened her heart. What for? It said, to heed. That's what it said, to heed. So beautiful. It really, I mean, we feel so happy to know that the word, we see it everywhere. This, to pay attention, to heed, to diligently obey. It is exciting. And to compare this with the prophecy. Because... It opens a path toward the Lord's blessings. But moreover, furthermore, it gives us a path toward pleasing God, which is what we all want. We want the Lord to be to feel happy with us. Isn't this right? Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Lord opened her heart to heed to the things spoken by Paul, because also whenever the Apostle Paul spoke, those words transformed people and gave them a new life filled with happiness and joy and also miracles and healings. There was a woman who attended church, but at a certain certain time she said, well, I was attending that church, but I really wasn't putting my heart into it. And I didn't really understand things, the things of God either, nor was there in me a purpose to seek him. And she had dermatitis. Her face was a red color and was in very bad health shape. And so this made her feel really badly because of her condition. So she suffered a lot until one day as she heard testimonies, she said she, does, she didn't know what happened, but on that day she understood that just as God blessed everyone who testified with miracle and tell miracles of God. He said, why can that happen? Not, not to me. Why can God not heal me? God is going to heal my, my skin. What happens is that I have not given myself to him. I have not valued his things. I have not have put my heart into seeking the things of God. I, we could say now with this sermon, I have not paid attention. We could comp added to it. But she said, I have not given myself to God. I, I have not done it with sincerity. That's what she said. And from that day, day on, then she started to congregate. And on the day she least expected it, during a prayer from our sister Maria Luisa, she called on to God for her skin condition. And she said that she started to feel that her skin was going to explode, that it was that she felt like fire, like like flames on her face, and that she ran to the bathroom. When she went to the bathroom, her skin was absolutely clean. Absolutely clean. It had all disappeared. Her dermatitis had gone away. There were no traces of that face that she used to have, but rather it was now a new face. And it was a new skin. Glory to the name of the Lord. Why? Because he put her heart into it. Because he paid attention. He, he, she heeded. Because she trusted. Because she didn't doubt. Because she decided to put the teachings in the practice. She paid attention and she put her heart into it. And that is why she received blessings from the Most High. Glory to God. This is wonderful. This is the work of our Lord that excites us. And let us read in Hebrews chapter number 2. Hebrews chapter 2, the Bible teaches us about this work of blessings when, whenever we put our heart into it and we pay attention to the things of our God, to the doctrine. In Hebrews 2, chapter number 1, verse number 1 rather, the Bible states, therefore, are we all there? Chapter 2, verse 1, chapter, Hebrews 2, chapter 1. Therefore, we must give the more earnest, what? Heed, earn it. But it says earnest, meaning we must put an effort. We must strive, earnest, heed to the things of we have heard. It, it, it means that we pay more attention. 
that we don't settle for this, that we, we shouldn't think that we've already attained everything, but rather in our lives, we must pay more attention. Every day of our lives, we must be more awake. We must have our five senses even more. What for? So that we do not slide away, so that we do not fail the Lord, so that we do not commit sin, so that we don't fall into the devil's trap, so that we may be blessed by God. Glory to the Lord. Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed. Meaning, this does not stop. This is continuous. This is that no one can neglect this. We ha must pay attention every day even more. Well, I am focusing more. I don't think about my problems now. I'm no longer... I mean, I am giving myself more. I'm meditating. I'm reflecting more on these things. Don't grow overconfident more and more and more. Pay it says with a more earnest heed. The give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. And then he explains in verse 2 that this word spoken through angels, during, through the law of Moses, they didn't heed it. They did not heed it. And even though that it was given by angels to Moses, by the Most High God. And they didn't pay attention. They didn't heed it. They didn't heed to it. Because when you heed something, you put it into practice. And that's how you know you pay, you pay attention. It says, we must be careful. Today, our, with the salvation that God is offering us, which is the gospel, that we must give the more earnest heed. And that especially because this gospel is a gospel that is complete, that is uh, authentic, where we have the Holy Spirit with the, the, the spiritual gifts, with, which is what verse 4 states, God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to His own will. Meaning, these are the gifts of the Holy Spirit that are God-given, which is the one that we live in the church, speaking in tongues, the gift of prophecy, all the spiritual gifts of healings and miracles, discerning, discernment of spirits, wisdom, intelligence, and so on, and that manifestation. For those who pay attention, that the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. A few days ago, a sister here in Colombia enjoyed a message of our sister Maria Luisa on and, and the TV. She enjoyed it to such extent. And in that message, our sister Maria Luisa prayed for this country, for Colombia, and for people, and so on. It was a very beautiful prayer. But she paid so much attention to that prayer, because that's another recommendation that I, that I give you. Whenever we're listening to that prayer, also, we learn very much in the way uh, our sister Maria Luisa prays. And she paid, his sister paid so much attention to the prayer that she wanted to keep praying and praying. And what happened? What, it, what ended up happening? It, she was baptized with the Holy Spirit. Glory to the name of the Lord. So that's the way it is. Just how God can bless those. As the title of the sermon says, God blesses those who put their heart and attention to his word. Glory to the name of the Lord. And lastly, let us read 1 Peter. 1 Peter, let us... Chapter number 1. 1 Peter, chapter number 1. 2 Peter, rather. Chapter number 1. Let us read the teaching the Apostle Peter is giving us as to how the Lord manifested Himself how the Lord, through prophecy in the Old Testament, through the prophets, and in those who heeded to those, pro those prophecies, who heeded those words from the prophets concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, God blessed them. 
Because, but why? Because they paid attention, because they paid attention and they put their heart into it. And this became a torch that shone inside, that sh shone inside, shined inside. What happened? I mean, that they were illuminated all of a sudden, glory to the Lord, that suddenly they understood, that suddenly they were delivered, that suddenly the Lord removed veils, that suddenly they, as the Bible says, they were turned into another man. And they felt, they, they felt happy and they were liberated of their problems, liberated of their complexes, of their sadness, of their fears, of their weaknesses and their mistakes. As it states in Second Peter chapter 1, verse number 19. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed. How beautiful, prophecy which was given in antiquity, and it is, and we have it today as well, the gift of prophecy, which you do well. It says you do well. He's saying, yes, you're doing well. But who? Those do well to heed. That's what it says. Those who heed and pay attention to the prophecies of in antiquity, the prophets of the Old Testament, the scriptures, you do well. It's in the Bible and the Holy Spirit just taught it to us. You do well to heed. Put your heart into it. Why? Because all of this, when you put your heart into it, into the Bible, into the teachings, into everything that we learn, that what that is like comparison, it is a, as a light that shines in a dark place. Like when you, inside... You still don't understand the things of the Lord. And then suddenly you reach that place where there's light. Because the Lord is the light of the world. Glory to, to God, His gospel. And it shines inside of you and takes away darkness from you. So that your work is like the light of dawn. And like the day itself. That it, it becomes perfect like the sun at noon, here until the da day dawns and the morning star rises when? In your hearts, because everything is done with your heart, because you hear with your heart, because you embrace these teachings in your heart, because you assimilate them and you put them into practice with your heart, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. This happened to a sister with her husband that he made her life impossible, he mistreated her, he was a person who was disrespectful toward her. And during this situation, this pandemic, he started to join us. And then she started to watch the live streams alone. And then she, he came to her side to join her. And God manifested himself in her because he put his heart also. God her, her, helped him. And nowadays, he is the first one who, who goes to the live stream and he says to the live, to her wife, come, the live stream is about to get started. Well, this person is another man nowadays. She does not know how to thank God for the way God worked in her life. God has given a new husband to her, but now there's no question. It is because he opened her, she opened her heart because he paid attention as well. Glory to the name of the Lord. Let us rise, brothers and sisters. Let us pray to the Most High, and we're going to call unto Him so He may help us, so that we may put this sermon into practice, and so that God may help us attain it. Blessed Heavenly Father, at this time we beg You, Lord, that You manifest Yourself in our midst. We thank You once again for Your love and kindness. And we ask You, Lord, with all our being, that you help us just as you helped Lydia on a given day. That you, Lord, wanted to bless her, Lord. And that's why you came to her. So that she would pay attention. So that she would heed the, th the things of Paul. So that her heart would come to you. Hallelujah. May our hearts show an inclination toward you with sincerity. May our hearts be willing and open out of love for God. May our hearts be tender and that you ride upon them 
the commandments, your words. May our hearts be like an open book on which you ride your doctrine for us to bear fruits and put it into practice. Praise us who the Lord may be so. This is what we desire to put our heart, to pay attention, to please you, to come into your joy, to come into your please, to make you pleased, enjoy your fellowship and your blessedness. Glory to God. Praise us to the everlasting King. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us what we must do and help us that we may be free and that we may put this sermon into practice every day to the letter and that we may depth delve into it and, and be more diligent every day by heeding your things, by putting our heart into it, by be giving ourselves to it. May the devil flee from any witchcraft, spirits of death, depart. May this virus and all, every bad thing of the devil may be undone, may be removed. May the God of glory give us victory, support, blessing, and plenitude in the spirit. The glorious gift of the Holy Spirit. And may every day, may we be illuminated by that torch that shines in our hearts. May it shine on our, upon our lives and fill us with joy. May the God of glory heal us physically. May the God of glory continue working miracles and wondrous deeds in our lives, for there is nothing to fear. Our Lord is with us. And the blessings of the Most High is upon our lives with the best of heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you, beloved God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Let us sing chorus number 107. Awake me now. 107. Thank you, Lord. You are worshipped. You are beautiful. You are good and kind. Glory to the Lord. Brothers and sisters, have a great night. This was excited, exciting to be able to spend these moments with you all. Big hug to you all. May the Lord fill you with the best of his blessings. May God bless you all. So long. Mm -hmm.